Welcome, and in this video, let's work on one more example where we need to use check substitution. Integral from 0 to 2, x cubed, a square root of x squared plus 4 dx. Which case should we consider? When you see a square root with addition, usually that is the case when you use tangent as substitution. Since we can see that integrand has a term of the form the square root x squared plus 2 squared. We use a trigonometric substitution x equals 2 tangent theta. From here dx will be 2. What is derivative of tangent? Secant squared theta d theta. Then we will find the integral Let's first forget about the boundaries. Actually, that is more convenient way to do this way. So integral x cubed square root of x squared plus 4. This is indefinite integral. Becomes integral of. So x cubed. x cubed will be 2 cubed tangent cubed theta, a square root of, now we have x squared, so it's going to be 2 squared tangent squared theta plus 2 squared. And now dx, remember, this dx is this piece, the tail, which is 2 secant squared theta d theta. If you still keep using uh, limits of integration you can actually do that then you have to change a uh, zero and two zero becomes something and you actually have to solve for theta so it's two tangent theta where tangent and zero blah 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 but to be honest many people don't do that they just solve indefinite integral and then at the end they remember that it actually was a definite integral so let's simplify everything what we have here. 2 cubed times 2. Uh, I'm talking about this one. 2 cubed times 2 is 2 to the 4. Let's kick it outside of the integral. Then I have tangent cubed theta. Square root. Let's factor out uh, 2 squared. That will be tangent square theta plus 1, and it's exactly what we wanted to have, times secant square theta d theta equals, move on, now we have this square, I mean, I guess, let me show you like this, square root of 2 squared is 2, and it's product, so we can break it into two roots like so, two square roots, now 2 to the 4 times 2 becomes 2 to the 5. 2 to the 5 integral tangent cube theta. Don't touch it yet. Now let's put it in purple. Tangent square theta plus 1 is secant square theta. Uh, that's what's the call goal to use this inequality. Here's in the table. If you forgot it, it's over here in the table. 1 plus tangent squared is secant squared. So now I have the square root of secant squared theta times secant squared theta, d theta. Next step is your favorite. The square root and square cancel out each other or undo each other. Those are inverse functions. Tangent cube theta, square root of the square gives you just secant theta but then secant times secant squared gives you secant cube d theta so we now are here well let me see what else should we be doing now we need to use all kind of knowledge we had from the before to go back to use substitution so in this case let's i would not actually merge this uh, secant. I would keep it as secant theta and secant squared theta d theta because secant squared theta d theta can be written, uh, let me tell you in a second, like so. Tangent 
cube is tangent square times so we want secant to be u let me finish writing that we have tangent square times tangent and then we have secant squared times secant that's what we did here remember about even and odd exponents so how do i know that u should be secant because du will be secant theta tangent theta and now taking this one single tangent and this one single secant don't forget d theta will give us du so let me carefully rewrite it in case i lost you tangent cube becomes tangent squared secant cube becomes secant squared each of them gave me one secant and one tangent i will put it in the uh, pink tangent theta and secant theta d theta that's a tail which i kind of cut off from secant cube and tangent cube but that is perfect that's ugly but that is perfect du since now we know what du is now we know what u should be so this is the case when du comes first and then it indicates what u should be u should be secant then what to do with tangent we can again use the same inequality where they use tangent plus one is secant or secant is one well secant squared no or we can rewrite as it's actually over here tangent is secant squared minus one so and tangent squared is secant squared minus one so we're using u substitution and this formula identity so it's going to be two to the five integral tangent square becomes in blue secant squared theta minus one then we have u well let's not have it u secant squared theta and then the tail tangent theta secant theta d theta u is secant theta so it's going to be 2 to the 5 integral u square minus 1 u square du which is the best integral to have it worked i'm so happy are you happy i'm happy u to the 4 minus u square du integrate that 2 to the 5 u 5 over 5 minus u cube over 3 plus c that is if we had indefinite integral which is by the way now we need to go back remember u uh, is secant so it's going to be secant to the 5 theta over 5 secant minus secant cube theta over 3 let's put brackets and 2 to the 5 in front of it okay but now this is plus c and we don't need plus c we need to figure out uh what is happening with the original variable x we are right now answering in terms of theta and indefinite integral that is not good so to go back this is part two which is the most annoying part to be honest when we chose x to be 2 tangent theta we basically said that tangent theta will be x over 2 the right triangle comes in into the picture if we use theta as being an angle on the right triangle which looks like this and the label decides opposite theta as x and this side adjacent to theta as 2 so theta is here and then we have x and 2 because that's definition of tangent opposite over adjacent 
then this is a triangle that will represent the situation where theta is given. Now, what do we need to find? We need to find this secant phi to the 5 and secant theta, uh, secant cube, right? Using Pythagorean theorem, we can do that because we know what secant is. So, uh, what is secant? Do you guys remember? Secant theta, by the definition, is 1 over cosine theta. So we need to find cosine, basically. If you find cosine from this triangle, then we know 1 over cosine, right? So find cosine theta. That's what we're doing here. From the triangle. Using the right triangle, right? So that means we need a third uh, side. And we know how to find the hypotenuse. This side, let's call it C, will be a square root x squared plus 4, right? Because C squared equals x squared plus 4 squared. From there, by the definition, cosine theta will be uh, adjacent side, which is 2, all over the hypotenuse, which is a square root x squared plus 4. Then, or thus, then, Secant, let me make it nice, secant theta will be a square root x squared plus 4 all over 2. Well, I just flipped it, right? Because it's because it's 1 over cosine, right? Uh, so, now we can answer, we can answer that. Answer 1, <laughs> dy1. Because we're going back to the initial variable, it's going to be indefinite integral. x cube, integral of x cube, x squared plus 4 dx, is going to be 2 to the 5. And then it was secant 5 over 5. Well, now it's going to be a square root x squared plus 4 over 2 to the 5 over 5, right? Like so. I would not create so many fractions. Let's just have one-fifth in front of it. Minus, then there was secant cube over 3. So let's put one-third there. Copy-paste x squared plus 4 over 2. All of this raised to the 3. Simplify that. I kind of really don't want to simplify that. Oh, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. So check it out. Uh, I will distribute 2 to the 5 over 5. And then a denominator from the purple side, it will be 2 to the 5. So they cancel out. Do you Did you see that? I just did this to the 5 and this to the 5 separately. Now you have x squared plus 4 raised to the 5 halves. Because it's a square root raised to the 5. Minus, again, 2 to the 5 over 3, again, cancels out. Two to, oh, it doesn't cancel out completely, but some of it does. It's going to be 2 squared left, right? And then it's going to be x squared plus 4 raised to 3 halves. If we simplify even more, it will be 1 fifth x squared plus 4 5 halves minus 4 thirds, 4 thirds x squared plus 4, 3 halves plus c, indefinite integral. Finally, we're ready to plug 0 and 2. So, thus, therefore, the summarize whatever you like to do, <laughs> you know, whatever you like in English. Integral from 0 to 2 x cube square root x square plus 4 dx will be this answer but we're plugging let me just copy paste it okay we're plugging 0 and 2 ah too, com oh, too complicated you know what i'm do i'm just gonna plug it right away so i'm plugging um x equals 2 first 
It's going to be one fifth. Two square plus two. Uh, plus four, sorry. Plus four, five halves minus four thirds. Two square plus four, three halves. That is when I plug x equals two. Now minus, don't forget, minus. Plug x equals zero. So it's going to be one fifth four to the five halves minus four thirds four to the three halves. But you know one half is a square root, so it's actually a square root of four is two raised to the third power. So when you simplify everything, it becomes two over one, 15, two to the five brackets, square root of two plus one. I just looked it up, to be honest. But that is a correct answer. Good job if you paid attention for so long. And uh, remember which formulas we used. We first chose tangent to substitute in, then we used uh, identities between that have connection between tangent and secant these ones that's the same one then we simplified and we we went back to a different chapter about u substitution and then we used u substitution and came back with the answer that has theta in it and that is not good so we had to use right triangle to find that not theta, we were finding secant theta. That's easier than just finding theta as arc secant. And when we found that, we simplified and we were ready to answer by plugging uh, 2 and 0 because originally it was a definite integral. Good job for watching.